Today I'm going to be sharing exactly how I got an A-star in computer science GCSE. Now before I start, my name is Yusuf and I make videos helping people get the highest grades that they can achieve whilst at the same time doing the minimal effort. So if that interests you, check out some of my other videos. Now what's the first thing you think of when you hear computer science? For me, it's programming, but it's not as important as people make it out to be. Now don't get me wrong, programming is a huge part of computer science, but it's not where most of the marks are in GCSE. Computer science at GCSE, A level, and even university level is a very broad subject. So don't think just because you're a good programmer you're going to do very well without studying that much. And also vice versa, don't think that if you don't know how to program you're going to do badly. I didn't have any experience programming before I went into the GCSE. Everything I learned, I learned from my teacher and also some online resources, but it was all after studying the GCSE. The exam board that I did was Cambridge International and they split up the exam into two papers. The first paper was the theory paper, it's quite self-explanatory, it's pretty much like any GCSE science paper you do. And the second paper was more practical, it was most of the programming stuff and pseudocode, queries, that type of stuff. Now the content in the theory and the content in practical is going to be quite different, which means you're going to have to approach them in a different way when you want to study for them. For theory, I would recommend something called the NFT method, which I've coined and has nothing to do with cryptocurrency. I've explained this method in detail in the video I've made about how I got online in GCSE Science, which you can watch right here. But in short, make notes, then make flashcards, memorize the flashcards, and then bang out exam questions. That's it. Now the thing about computer science GCSE is that the theory paper, people find it easier than the practical paper. And that's because the way it's structured is quite similar to science GCSE, like physics, biology, chemistry. And so they're familiar with the questions and how they're worded. So if you want to differentiate yourself, you need to focus on the practical paper. I had a lot of friends that didn't even bother with the practical paper because when they were practicing for the exam, they opened it and they realized how intimidating and daunting it was because they never came across something similar to it. And so they threw it away and they just focused on theory. But that's how you limit yourself to a B or a C. You can't get any higher than a B if you don't focus on the practical paper. And so instead of doing what they did, I got past the initial discomfort and I grinded the papers as much as possible until I got very familiar with them to the point where I actually enjoyed them more than the theory paper. Now, I don't know if this is the same across all exam boards, but for Cambridge International, the practical paper is pretty much the same thing every single time, but the values and the questions are just different. Before you even open the paper, you're gonna know that there's gonna be a couple of pre-release questions, followed by maybe a query, and then some questions about finding the error in pseudocode. It's very predictable. They just change up the values, they change up the answers. But if you practice a couple, you'll know what's coming up. And lastly, this is the most important thing. Don't write yourself off from the beginning. Unlike math or English or science, which we learn all the way from primary school to now, computer science is going to be most likely a new subject to you. But please don't let that discomfort hold you back. I had a lot of friends and a lot of people in my class that from the first couple of weeks, they didn't understand the content being taught. Maybe it was the fault of the teacher, I don't know. But they wrote themselves off and they just told themselves that they're not fit for the subject instead of persisting. What do you think happened to them? They limited themselves to a student that only gets B's or C's in computer science. And so that's exactly what they did. They ended up getting B's and C's. Now, I'm not preaching anything to do with manifestation or any of that stuff. I'm just saying, Fix your mindset, just know that you can get a very high grade and that's going to shape your brain into seeking that. I, I don't know, th this is just bro science what I'm telling you, but if you convince yourself that you could do something, your brain is going to prime itself to do it. If you convince yourself the opposite, then your brain is not going to bother with doing it. This is not scientifically backed, this is just my experience, <laughs> but I think a lot of people would agree with me. So just know that you can 100% get an A star even if you're struggling. Always remember that.